All right, welcome everybody. Just to give you a brief overview of how this session is going to work, we're going to do a panel for the first two combined sessions of the 15-minute slots. We're going to let Brianna Donaldson from the American Institute of Mathematics, the special projects director there, go first. She'll talk for eight to 10 minutes about the national organization and so on. Then we'll have Peggy Moore uh, speak about the Casco Bay math teacher circle and their unique model and so on. And then Amanda Saravani about math teacher circles and the connection to the Common Core. Did I pronounce your name wrong? Sure, give a 10 second introduction to yourself if you would please, I guess. I'm Betsy Yannick, I'm from Emporia State University in Kansas and I know very little about the math circles but I wanna know more. <laughs> I'm Carla Beatty, and I'm from uh, UC Santa Barbara, and I work with in teacher education, uh, math education, and we do some conversations and investigations together, and I'm wondering how that might be similar to math circles. Hello, my name is Samuel Knaus, I'm at the University of Texas at El Paso, and uh, I've been doing some teacher education, have heard about math circles, but don't know much about it. I am Harold Ryder from UNC Charlotte, and I've enjoyed being part of the uh, instructional team that runs the, the summer uh, week-long workshops for how to, how to run a, a teacher circle. Hi, I'm Erin Salette. I'm from Augusta, Georgia. I teach at Burke County High School, and I don't know much about math circles. That's why I'm here. I'm Jane Cushman. I'm at Buffalo State College, and I've been to a couple of sessions at um, the joint math meetings about math circles, and I'm still very intrigued and still trying to talk myself into making one up. We like that idea. So we'll go through each one consecutively. If there are any really brief questions or points of clarification after each speaker, we'd like to give you the opportunity to ask those, but please keep those as brief points of clarification, and then we can have a more extended discussion at the end. The other thing, with such a small group, we may be tempted to just start talking back and forth without microphones, but remember, they are videoing everything and um, really want us to use the microphones all the time. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Brianna. Thanks, Diana. Um, so as Diana said, I'm, I'm Brianna Donaldson. I'm director of special projects at the American Institute of Mathematics. And um, so AIM, American Institute of Mathematics, has been very involved in the effort to help spread math teacher circles around the country and to help support those circles once they get started. And this is actually a big part of my job at AIM. So what is a math teacher circle? Um, it's a, we would say it's a professional development community of teachers and mathematicians who meet regularly to work on rich mathematics. Um, and so usually we're talking about a group of maybe 15 to 20 teachers, often they're middle school teachers, sometimes they're high school teachers or elementary teachers. Um, and, they, and they meet together with maybe three or four mathematicians. Um, and maybe they start out with a summer workshop and then they go into uh, academic year meetings that happen maybe monthly or so. And the idea is that this is a sustainable kind of effort and a community that continues over many years. Um, and, and one of the things that is really key to a math teacher circle is that um, math teacher circle, um, the approach is very inquiry-based and consistent with um, IBL. And so the, it's very, very interactive. Um, the teachers really lead a lot of, they really um, are forced to, <laughs> or um, made to invest, do a lot of the investigation themselves um, and with the guidance of the mathematician um, or sometimes of a mathematician and teacher working together, which I think Peggy might talk about. Um, the first math teacher circle began at the American Institute of Mathematics in uh, 2006. And now we do this, um, these workshops called How to Run a Math Teacher Circle that Harold was uh, mentioning in his introduction. And um, these, uh, there are two of them every summer. We start 12 new math teacher circles a year through these workshops. And currently we have about 53 active math teacher circles in 31 states. So it's really an effort that's really spreading. Some of the support that we provide at AIM through the Math Teacher Circle Network, um, so we, we organize these How to Run a Math Teacher Circle workshops. We have um, a couple different websites with different kinds of resources for the teams who start their own math teacher circles. 
Um, we have a, an online discussion group. We have a semi-annual newsletter. And uh, we also are really involved in research and evaluation about the effectiveness of math teacher circles. So I just wanted to mention quickly, um, looking at math teacher circles as a form of professional development, um, we feel that their math teacher circles are very well aligned with uh, the common core state standards for mathematics, especially the standards for mathematical practice. And um, in addition, um, the math teacher circle model has been recommended as a form of professional development for middle and high school teachers by the Conference Board of the Mathematical Sciences, their new Mathematical Education of Teachers II document. And so this is a quote from that document that I think really captures some of the spirit of behind what we're doing with Math Teacher Circle. A substantial benefit of Math Teacher Circles is that they address the isolation of both teachers and practicing mathematicians. They establish communities of mathematical practice in which teachers and mathematicians can learn about each other's profession, culture, and work. I think that's really, really at the heart of what we're doing, a lot of what we're doing. So um, I mentioned that we're very involved in, um, in efforts to study and evaluate math teacher circles. Um, and so there's a, a National Science Foundation grant that's been awarded to AIM and that, um, <laughs> and um, let's see, and so some other people, um, including Diana, have been um, very involved in this um, as, as co-PIs. The idea behind this grant is to look at the effects of uh, math teacher circles on uh, how teachers experience mathematics and how math teacher circles might uh, affect teachers' classroom teaching. So I just want to tell you a little bit about some preliminary results from surveys that we've done as part of this, um, this study. So we've surveyed like all the math teacher circles around the country, um, and we've started to do this annually every spring. And, and we'll ask them qu various questions related to um, this bigger question that I have up there. So I want to tell you a little bit about sort of math, like effects on how teachers um, experience mathematics and a little bit about what maybe math teacher circles do in terms of affecting their classroom teaching. So we asked the teachers, please tell us one or two things that you've gotten better at mathematically as a result of participating in math teacher circle. And so we had 140 people respond to this question, and 94% said that they had gotten better at something mathematically. And um, as you can see here, so 21% said they got better at understanding a particular aspect of mathematical content, and 78% reported being better at the practice of mathematics, which we think is really, really striking, especially given um, like I was mentioning before, the Common Core um, standards for mathematical practice and just how important they are to the entire Common Core and also um, how difficult it is to really grasp the, um, those standards in particular for, I think, a lot of teachers. Um, so I wanted to tell you, uh, just show you a few quotes about um, how teachers felt that they'd gotten better at the practice of mathematics. So this is a really common one, breaking problems down into manageable parts. And that's like a big thing that teachers say, that a strategy that they maybe sometimes encounter for the first time in math teacher circle that we see as really, you know, it's a very fundamental strategy to doing mathematics. Um, and it's something that they are really um, absorbing through math teacher circle. Presenting a concept in several ways and understanding the why behind the how. So really getting at a more conceptual understanding. Um, it's helped me develop my persistence. Um, I've been better at seeing multiple ways of solving problems from math teacher circle. And I really like this one. I've gotten better at helping others without giving away the answer. <laughs> um, and so you know, we've known for a while, I mean, teachers have been telling us for a while a lot of these things about how math teacher circles make them sort of see mathematics differently. We haven't done as much asking in the past about what they do differently in their classrooms. Um, and so, we, but we did ask them on this survey, uh, please list one or two specific things about your teaching that you've changed as a result of participating in math teacher circle. So, um, 73% of the 160 respondents told us something that they had changed about their teaching. 
Now, something that's really interesting about this is math, math teacher circle is really not focused on teaching for the most part. It's very much, while the teachers are um, in a math teacher circle session, they're doing mathematics. They're not really, we sometimes even ask them explicitly, you know, just put aside your teaching hat for now and really just, just focus on, on doing math and enjoying this and um, learning yourself. And, um, you know, and so there are sometimes discussions that people will have, of course, sort of outside the formal session about how the session relates to their teaching. Um, however, it's not necessarily like we're, we're giving them things to take right back to their classroom or, or things like that. However, there, um, there are some really encouraging kinds of changes that these teachers are reporting. Um, they're saying they actually are able to incorporate some of the problems that they see at Math Teacher Circle. Um, they spend more time on problem solving. They use more inquiry-based methods with their students. They are basically challenging their students more and also um, helping their students, you know, through struggles. So letting their students struggle and sort of supporting them through that process, which is really crucial for their students to grow mathematically as well. And so just a couple of quotes here. Um, I'm not afraid to give students challenging material allowing more student discovery, um, using guided inquiry and peer discussion to teach mathematical topics rather than only teaching mathematical concepts by rote, giving students fewer steps, asking them to tackle um, complex problems with less scaffolding of the problem itself, and helping them reflect on their problem-solving process and um, just going toward having uh, teaching that's more student-based and less teacher-directed. So basically, just to summarize, um, teachers report that they're getting, as a result of participating in Math Teacher Circle, they're getting better at the practice of mathematics, and also they're getting better at implementing inquiry-based methods in their classrooms. This is actually supported by a study done by researchers at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, um, who did some classroom observations of math teacher circle participants and, and found that indeed they did increase their use of inquiry-based uh, teaching practices. And we, um, as part of our study, are also doing some uh, case studies looking at um, trying to see, a, you know, get a more comprehensive view of um, what um, is motivating people to participate in math teacher circle and what kinds of effects is it having on them. Thank you. Thanks, Priyana. Are there any really quick questions on clarifying what a math teacher circle is? <clears throat> you may have indicated, but the teachers that you, who you surveyed yes. uh, and who participated, were they um, middle school and high school? Were they, which, which grade band were you working with? Both. So um, we have primarily focused on um, getting people to start middle school math teacher mm -hmm. circles. However, um, I think for this particular survey, it was about two-thirds middle school and maybe a quarter high school, and then the rest maybe elementary or sort of miscellaneous, like some retired teachers or um, homeschool parents or things like that. Mm -hmm. All right, and again, we'll have more time for in-depth questions and so on at the end. At this point, we'll hand it over to Peggy Moore. So thank you. Um, as uh, Diana mentioned, my name is Peggy Moore, and I'm at the University of Southern Maine, which is in, uh, not surprisingly, the southern part of the state in Portland and Gorham, Maine. Um, before I start, I just have to mention something, because I'll probably forget if I don't, and that is what Brianna was talking about. At our, our last circle, at the very end, we asked the teachers, you know, what they might like to have different for next year, some topics, different things. And uh, in the course of the discussion, um, one of our, our, our group who's been with us since the very beginning said, well, you know, I'm just kind of concerned because I'm not, I'm not getting things at the circle that I'm taking into the classroom. And we said, success. <laughs> and I guess we hadn't been deliberate enough about that it really was for them as individuals. And, and certainly some of them said, well, actually, you know, I take this and I've modified some things and I do use it. But it just made me think about when you mentioned that perhaps we need to be a little bit more deliberate about what our, what our goal is. So um, as I said, I'm from the Casco Bay Math Teacher Circle. And uh, I just wanted to show this. This is our website, which we actually created while we were at our house to create a math teacher circle 
uh, session. Um, and the reason that I wanted to do this, and I'm not an Apple user, so we'll see if this actually works. I'm not sure if it will. I wanted to blow it up. Um, is because I'm one of a team, and I am just one of one of the five that came and one of the five leaders we had. And what I guess has been identified as a little bit unique about our group is that we are, um, we are all in it together. Uh, if someone were to say, well, could, we, could I talk to the, the leader of your circle? Um, I'm not sure who would answer the phone. And uh, in fact, we were interviewed for Math Teachers Circular, and they uh, titled the article about us, Five Cooks in the Kitchen. And I thought that was kind of an interesting analogy, but um, there we are. Um, we um, have, our group consists of our, our five that you see there, myself in the middle for no specific reason. Uh, to my left is my colleague, Mohamed Al-Taha, who's um, on the faculty at University of Southern Maine with me. And then I, we have three um, middle school teachers. And one thing that's um, interesting to us, again, is that we were perceived as being a little bit unusual with our team approach. But I guess this is the way we looked at it. We came to Washington as a team. We, as a team, planned how we would roll out our circle. And so it just seemed logical then that as our circle evolved, we would kind of continue in this team model. So what I want to talk a little bit about is what that, that team piece means. Uh, first of all, we present as pairs. And so whenever we present at one of our circles, which uh, I should just take a moment and say, we meet once a month. I think that's what Brianna had just suggested was sort of a typical meeting. We meet from four to six, and uh, we provide dinner, um, so that's our, that's our carrot, if you will. Uh, we don't have a stick in our math teacher circle, uh, but we meet monthly. Um, and we present with uh, one of us, so either Mohammed, my colleague at the university, or myself, and then one of the teachers. And I, I think our model has worked really well um, for a host of reasons, which I'll, which I'll talk about. Um, but the nice thing is that the teachers are so invested. It is really their circle, and they don't see it as something that's being done for them or given to them or, or, or anything like that, but they're really, they're, they have a lot of ownership. And uh, we call it the pass the baton model. So uh, typically what we start out with is a problem that the, the middle school teacher will identify or lay out. And then at some point during the session, they also kind of say, well, I think I'm going to pass the baton. We usually pass a, a marker instead. Uh, but they pass it to the mathematician, and then we, um, we take it from there. Although I will say that oftentimes there's a little bit of give and take and moving back and forth. But the, um, I think the really, well, there's, there's several great things about it. One is um, that I love to team teach. I think when you team teach, you can just you can do so much more than you as an individual can do. And so working to lead the circle in teams, we're there to check one another, if you will, or keep one another in check. Um, one of the things that we uh, took from Washington and we, we have taken to heart very, very seriously is the importance of time. Uh, and giving everyone in the circle time to process, time to think about uh, the problem, time to ask questions. And I think that when you're presenting in the team, you can have that. You know, if I'm, if I'm about to, to launch and go into something different, my co-presenter might say, oh, no, 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 I think we need some more time for folks to process. I think we need to ask some more questions. So that presenting as a team really helps in that way. Um, it also really, um, I, I think it helps to to push the high or the middle school teacher who's presenting, because sometimes they'll say, "Well, you know, Peggy, I'll I'll take the session this far, and then that's where we're going to pass the baton." And I say, "No, well, why don't you try it a little bit further? Why don't you do this next piece as well?" And so I think that it really helps them to grow um, in in a lot of different ways. Um, the other aspect of our team planning is that, in fact, our sessions um, are usually, or our session topics are usually decided upon by the middle school teachers as opposed to by uh, the two mathematicians on the team. Now, we meet a couple of times a year. We'll have, a, and I say we, the five of us, will meet a couple of times a year. We'll brainstorm over what the sessions for the year might be. We identify, you know, okay, you know, in October, you know, the two of us will do such and such. Um, and 
my, my colleague Mohammed and I both feel very strongly that this empowers the middle school teachers to help us pick topics that they think are going to be interesting. Now, they oftentimes don't know where the topic's going to go, but at least they know that that launch point is going to be something that is going to be of interest to uh, their colleagues. I don't think we could have this approach if I didn't have the, the teachers that I do working with me. They are tremendously uh, dedicated uh, middle school teachers. They are intellectually curious, uh, and they are willing to give of their time. And that's really important, because planning, as we all know, would take a lot of time, no matter what it is that you're planning. Um, the other thing that makes it possible is the support that Brianna and AIM and MA give us, because uh, the, the website, the resources there are fabulous. And so what we find is that the middle school teachers will, you know, they'll take a Saturday morning, honest to gosh, they take a Saturday morning, they'll meet, you know, at Starbucks, and they'll have their laptops out, and they'll be looking at topics, and then they'll say, oh, could we do this? Could we start with this idea? And of course, the answer is a, a resounding yes, of course we can, and so we work with that. You know, sometimes they come in and they say, "Oh, we really just we don't we don't have an idea what to do next time," and that's when you know we kind of take the baton, if you will, and work on that and try to suggest some ideas. But uh, it, it's a really engaging part. It's also, from the faculty perspective, um, really good because sometimes they'll say, "Can we do this?" and it's something entirely out of our area, and we say, well, of course we can, and that's when we go and find some colleagues at our institutions that want to help us out and give us some suggested articles to read, um, so that it's been a really a, a growth experience for us, and I think that's also great for the for the middle school teachers to see, you know, because they'll say to me, Peggy, can we do this in, uh, you know, in, in topology, and I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I go and find my colleagues for whom that's their specialty and uh, call upon them. So it's just, it's just a really stimulating intellectual environment that we have. Um, the, uh, the team, I, I of course contacted them about coming here. And uh, so I said to them, you know, if you were going to be here with me, because of course I wish they all could be here with me, um, what would you want to make sure that I bring up? And so here are just a couple of thoughts that, that I bring along for them, uh, from them, I should say. Um, this is hard work. <laughs> uh, but like all hard work, it's very valuable, very beneficial hard work. Um, one of my uh, colleagues uh, said, it reminds me not to be scared of hard problems. And I thought that was wonderful. And again, that came from one of my middle school teacher colleagues. Um, this is a labor of love. Uh, we have um, had some challenges with our funding, uh, but uh, we at least have been able to work with uh, my institution to get some funding for food, so we figure that's kind of helpful. But of course, we're all doing it as, as volunteers, and so they say, you know, this is really something that we love. And quite candidly, if we didn't, we wouldn't still be doing it. Uh, we attended the How to Lead a Math Teachers Circle Institute in, I believe it was the summer of 2010. Our launch was in the spring of 2011. So we've, we've got two full academic years under our belt. Um, and uh, although I think there are some months when one of us might say, oh gosh, you know, can I put the time into this? Uh, I look around at the other people at the table with me and I say, yes, I can, because we have a real commitment to one another. So uh, another thing that um, they commented upon was how absolutely critical it was to have the support of the website and everyone uh, at AIM, and Brianna especially, who we can just email and say, I need some help with this. Can you, can you bail me out? Um, we uh, were really excited, uh, and I, I hope it's okay to say this at the conference. Or, uh, we're really excited that, again, thanks to AIM and thanks to the and correct my pronunciation, the Disjardins Blanchard Continuing Circles Grant, thank you. Uh, we will be bringing James Tanton, we hope, to Portland, Maine in the fall, and, uh, and he has, I think, tentatively agreed. We have to firm, out some, uh, firm up some of the details, but we're very excited to have him coming. It might be the first time that we don't have the co-presenter model, because I'm not sure that we're going to necessarily ask him if he wants to, to team up with somebody, but that's a really exciting piece. We're hopeful that having him there can also generate a little bit of a buzz. Um, our attendance has been typically somewhere in the 18 to 25 um, people, and 
I was saying to Tatiana before the session, I was a little concerned about that, you know, would that meet the approval? And, and folks say, you know, that, that's okay, but if we could get some more, you know, coming, that would be wonderful. And I should mention, when I say 18 to 25, we do have the, you know, our, our, our push, if you will, and our advertising is all geared toward middle school teachers, but we've never turned people away. Um, we have a lot of uh, teachers who actually um, uh, were math ed uh, students at our institution who heard about it and said, oh, I'm teaching in the high school. Could I come too? And I was like, of course you can. That would be wonderful. So we don't turn anybody away. Uh, and we've had actually some faculty from other institutions in the area uh, who've seen our web page and say, oh, you know, would you mind if I came along and, you know, I'd say, yeah, I think we can, we can make a sandwich for you as well. That's no problem. So um, in closing, I just would like to let you know how, how wonderful um, working with the Math Circle community has been for me uh, personally. Um, I have to tell you that when I went to Washington, um, I hadn't met any, well, I knew my colleague from the university, hadn't met any of the middle school teachers, and in fact, well, I guess if I'm going to be absolutely honest, I have to tell you, I wasn't their first choice. My, one of my colleagues was going to go, but she had a baby that summer, and she called me up and she said, Peggy, this is going to be a really neat group of people to work with. I think you'll like them. Um, we met in the lobby of the hotel and walked over to the carriage house together for the first time, and I can't imagine cooking without them. So, thank you. Thanks, and I'll say that I hadn't met Peggy before extending the invitation for her to come. And I think it was a fantastic recommendation. I don't think we could have gotten a more enthusiastic um, person from a specific circle to come and talk to us about their model. All right, any really brief points of clarification? All right, in that case, Amanda is gonna have to help me pronounce her last name. Serenavi, thank you. I will hand it over to Amanda Serenavi. Oh, I just messed it up. <laughs> Um, so, I want to say a few words about um, connections with the Common Core State Standards and math circles. Um, one of the things that I've been excited about this past few years, I work quite a bit with professional development with teachers, and then also do math circles for kids. And um, one of the um, concerns that I have is the Common Core State Standards, um, which are, is everyone familiar? Does anyone not know what the Common Core is? Want a brief summary? Everyone good? Okay. So the Common Core State Standards represent a really amazing opportunity and also um, a challenge for the near term. Um, and that is, um, if we can get teachers um, and pre-service teachers to be prepared to do this and to give them materials that they will need to be successful um, with uh, aiming for those goals which are represented by the standards. I think it will transform mathematics education systemically throughout the country for the, for the better. But the, the big challenge is that um, n we're not ready there's not enough preparation. Um, the, the transitions are quite qu uh, quick, and so there's a potential for things to fall flat on their faces <laughs> because, um, because there's not enough support. And so one of the um, goals that I'd like to see, you know, mathematicians around the country, and I'm so excited to see this community as well, which I didn't know about before, the R.L. Moore um, conference group, um, is getting mathematicians involved in that question of supporting teachers at this critical time. Um, one of the things that I think the math circle community has to offer to this process is bringing joyous questions in mathematics to that. When you get a list of standards, what tends to happen is people come up with things like um, little they shoot an arrow and hit that target, and then they shoot another arrow and they hit that target, and they shoot another arrow and they hit that target. And what that gives you is sort of disjointed math instruction. And it's not the intention of the standards, per se, but it's what tends to happen 
when you're trying to quickly come up with something that will address a list. Um, but what, one of the things that the Mass Circle community is really good at is coming up with uh, very, uh, like I said, joyous and fun approach questions in mathematics that don't particularly seem like they're headed towards any of these uh, list of standards, but end up taking bunches of them in, in, a, in a swipe so that there's a journey that the students go on together um, to discover these things. And so that's what I'd like to invite people to help us with. Um, if, come and join us and bring some really awesome, fun ideas um, that we can use to help uh, support this transformation, this revolution in education in our country, and at the same time, um, have fun with mathematics the way it should be. So um, anyway, I'm going to cut my uh, t t uh, talk short. But if anyone has any questions, I'll, we can talk more later about other things. Thanks. Thanks, Amanda. Does anyone have any brief questions for Amanda before we open it up? OK, for the rest of our time together then, what we'd like to do is just open it up for any questions related to any aspect of math teacher circles, connections to the Common Core, et cetera, for any of the panelists, or just get a conversation going within the room. I'd like to hear the panelists uh, reply to the, uh, uh, the position of, of mystery in the journey. Uh, understood? Is that, is that enough to? Make the, is that, is that clear? You know, I think that when you say the mystery in the journey, what comes to mind to me right away is um, I never quite know what's going to happen on a given evening. I mean, I know what I, I'm thinking about, and I know the problem we're going to pose as our springboard, but sometimes the day goes completely differently than I have anticipated. And I think that's wonderful, you know, and I think it kind of goes to that whole, the, 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 the mystery, the inquiry, the discovery. Um, I was listening to a, a presenter yesterday who talked about discovery teaching as well as discovery learning, and so perhaps that's it. Um, in fact, it's really the mantra of, of one of our team leaders that we not be scripted. Now, that's not to say we don't prepare. We have pages and pages of preparation. But it's the willingness to, halfway through page one, toss it out and move to a much more interesting question that someone else has posed from the group. And so we experience sort of the mystery as presenters and we try to bring that to our group because oftentimes we'll have what we call, we tell them it's an icebreaker and it's just some maybe manipulative activity. And then at the end of the icebreaker, we ask them, what does this make you think of? What are some, you know, what are some questions you would ask? And then we hope they ask the one that we were planning, but if they don't, or if in fact we hear one that we like better, we go for it. So that's, I don't know if that's exactly what you're thinking of. How do you get such great participation rates? Because I, I work with teachers who are fearful. Now they're K-6 teachers, so they, I think as a rule, a little bit more fearful about mathematics. Um, <coughs> perhaps didn't feel strong mathematically early on and then they carry that to the classroom and so they really want to hide out a lot of times when we do professional development where they have to do mathematics and wrestle with big ideas. How do you, how do you make them comfortable? How do you lure them in and how do you keep them coming? I heard sandwiches <laughs> was a part of that. One thing that I often do with my um, teachers that I'm working with is um, emphasize the beauty and importance of making valuable mistakes <laughs> and talk about not just, um, you know, just all of the interesting ways we might mess this up. And I usually ask if I know that there's a group where, they, where they're going to make mistakes because it's, we're on the brink. 
I um, ask for several wrong answers before, tempting but wrong answers, and we discuss, well, that sounds so good. What's wrong with that? You know, seems so reasonable, and make it obvious that um, it's perfectly logical that someone might make that mistake, you know. So there, there's no stigma attached to that. And then we go from there. So, um, at, so a lot of times for, uh, when we're trying to get, we're helping people start math teacher circles, we really encourage them to start out with a summer workshop, um, like a really intensive workshop for uh, four or five days, maybe even residential if possible, so that the teachers really get a chance to um, to really form a bond with each other and really form a social community, basically. And um, so there's a real emphasis on, you know, this is a community and, you know, we do all the, we're doing all these things together and at these workshops they, they eat together and they, you know, they stay for like the evening session where you play games together or, you know, things like that. And I think that actually makes a really huge difference for a lot of the groups. Now, not all groups do that. In fact, I think in Peggy's did not. Um, so I don't know if you have other things to add. Um, we actually didn't do the, not for lack of desire, but um, funding and also um, it, it's, we have a very, very short summer in Maine. It lasts about two days, and we were afraid that if we scheduled the session during those two days, we really would have a problem. Um, we did instead, our first summer, we did a day-long event and had great participation. Um, I guess I would, a couple of things that I think has helped us a lot. Um, one is that before the math circle, the three middle school teachers that I work with were part of a, a book group. And so we started with a list of really engaged teachers. Now, not all of them have continued or even come to all of our sessions, but we had we had sort of a, a group, a kind of a core group of really invested teachers. Also, one of our team leaders is the past president of the Association of Teachers of Mathematics in Maine. So we have, um, you know, he some good list, list serve uh, information there. We also have tried to make it a really safe place. Um, that some people come and quite honestly, although they're engaged in their small group, I'm not sure they ever, you know, they might not be the person that ever reports out from the circle. They're engaged, they're in, you know, they're participating, but we, we let them all be at their level, whatever they want to do and feel comfortable. And we've also not made any sort of a, a, a commitment. I mean, I shouldn't say we've made a commitment. They, we don't force them to make a commitment and say, if you can come to one session this year, that that's okay, um, you know, so it's, I think there's a little bit of a freedom there to say, well, I can, I can try this out. And one other thing uh, is, is consistency, and, and, and that is we meet the first Wednesday of the month from 4 to 6.30 or 6, 6 o'clock. I, I laugh when I say that because one evening I thought that we were ending at 6.30, and at 6 o'clock I started to ask some new questions, and I got this horrified look from my co-presenter, and she said, um, we're done. <laughs> but they were so polite. People didn't pack up while I was talking. <laughs> I actually have one, one quick thing to add, too. I mean, part of it, I think, is also the kinds of problems that are used at math teacher circles. So, I mean, there's a real effort to choose sort of low threshold, high ceiling type problems where everyone can get somewhere. And it's, it's understandable, even if you don't have like a really advanced math background, you can still make progress. And there's still things that you can do at the beginning of the problem at least to get somewhere and feel like you've got something out of it, even if you don't go all the way, you know, the first time you participate. And also tied onto that, I'm sorry. <laughs> is that they can re-enter. We, 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 use, we use the bus as our analogy, and, and we'll, we'll laugh sometimes during our, prepare, our, our planning sessions. Um, one of them will say, oh gosh, I just fell off the bus. You know? But then you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, like, this is a great way where I can get back on. And that's, that, you know, so that was helpful. Another thing we do is, is if you're not the leadership team for that session, you are a participant. And, and so I think that's, that's it's fun too. I have a question about uh, your teams as far as when you are paired to be developing the lesson for the week. Um, what is your secret? How did you? <laughs> you seem like you have this charmed relationship with your middle school teachers. How did how, how did you work that? Good clean living. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> 
as I say, you know, we just, I, I feel so fortunate to have the team that I work with. Um, we enjoy being together. We, it, it was just, we, we were very fortunate. Um, I, I think um, we ask of each other what each other can give. You know, and there was a time when one of the team was having kind of a rough time and, and you know, said, I really need, I, I, I can come to the sessions, but I, I, I need a break from the presenting part. I was like, fine, no problem, you know, do what you can do. And, and we would like to bring some more people in. Um, I say that with a little bit of, of trepidation, but just because it's working so well, but we don't want people to get burned out. And so right now, it's for, for my colleague at the university and myself, we're, it's every other month, one of us is there. And, and I enjoy it, but when he was on sabbatical last semester, I said, oh good, you can take all of them because you have all this time. But in fact, it worked just the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hello, I just wanted to announce that I, we are starting a math, middle school math teacher circle in Anne Arundel County, and our initial workshop is next week from Tuesday to Friday. So I'm hoping that anyone in the room who has anything to offer from advice to showing up and helping us with our teacher group uh, would, would do that. Thanks. All right, I think that's probably a very natural stopping point. I'd like to thank all of you for attending. Um, I believe at 4.50 is when the sessions resume on the grid. And at that time, Tatiana Shubin and Henry Fowler will talk about the Navajo Nation Math Circles program.